Hi. In this tutorial, we will take a look at some advanced techniques using the Pattern Engine in Mario Extension Pack 5. We will build a little graph and end up with something like this, where we have multiple inputs and a mask determining where these inputs appear. Here I have a Pattern Generator node. If you looked at the node inside of the node graph, you might have noticed the multiple outputs of this node. We have the primary output, which gives us the result of the Pattern Generators, and then we have some other ones. The first one is pattern UVs and it outputs the UV coordinates for each cell. We have the pattern center, which gives a uniform value per cell. Next, we have the pattern index, which is an RGB map. So if we take a look at the view transform and just isolate the different channels, we have the red channel, which is the column index, sorry, the row index. So each row has a separate value. The green channel is the column index, where each column has a separate value. And the blue channel is the pattern index, so each cell has a different value. Next, we have the pattern mask, which outputs a black and white mask, the final result, and the pattern scale, which is a value that gives a scale value. So if I have a random scale, you can see I'm getting the scale value as a mask. Let's take a look at how we can utilize these different outputs. I'm going to create an image node and plug a map into the image slot. Close this again. So this is my mask at the moment. I'm going to hook this up into the probability map of the pattern generator. View the output again. And you can see if the probability masking is on, this map is now evaluated. Now there's one problem. As you can see, it's a very simple mask at the moment. So it actually cuts through each cell. So this is not really what we want in this case. Let's take a look how, how we can change this. I'm gonna select my pattern generator and copy the node and paste the node. Now I'm going to use the pattern index and plug it into the manifold of the image. And you can see we already have a different effect where cells are no longer cut off. However, there's a rotational issue at the moment. So if I look at my pure mask without the manifold, you can see it's rotated. Because the pattern index can be used as UVs, I can also modify them using UV tools in Mari. So I'm going to create a manifold UV node input the pattern index into the 2D coordinates and feed this output into the manifold of the image. Now I can use the manifold options to modify the UVs and get back to my correct result. Now there's one issue still. I seem to have some artifacts here. So I'm going to just add a thresholding in between the image and the probability map. set the edge to zero, and now I have a clean result. So I'm just basically filtering out, filtering out some floating values that are very, very close to zero. And now I have a very clean result where each cell is displayed and not cut off by the mask. So if we have a value that is um, going through a cell by the mask, the cell is displayed. Now what happens if I change something in the pattern generators? Let's say I change the amount. We go back to my output. So you can see, okay, something is quite weird because now I'm having this duplicate effect. Because you change something now, this pattern generator at the end is kind of out of date or out of sync. So the easiest way is just to go edit, copy node attributes, and then edit, paste node attributes, and now these nodes are in sync again. Next, let's try and apply some images to these different cells. First, let me clean up this a little bit. Just collapse these nodes down so it's a bit tidier. And then I'm going to create an image node. I'm going to hook up my version 5 logo again in here. And this time I'm going to take the pattern UVs of the node and feed it straight into the image node. Now you can see I have one cell, or sorry, one image per cell now. I'm going to create a merge node 
and a black constant. Move this into the base and the image into the over and just use the pattern mask output to make sure that always the mask is applied to this. So I have kind of the cells or the image follow the cells and uh, be stenciled out against the black background. Now I actually want to use multiple images. So I'm gonna duplicate these image nodes two times and apply different images to them. So here I'm gonna use a Mari logo and here just the inverted version of the Mari logo. Again, feed the pattern UVs into the manifolds. And I want to be able to switch between these. So I'm gonna create an input switch node. And X4 is fine in this case, where I have four different cases to switch between. Let me hook up the cases. And because I only have three, I'm gonna use the third one twice. And if I view this at the moment, it's still always the same pattern. And you can see there's some flickering going on, which is why I use the mask later on. So already let me hook this into the merge node here, where we applied the mask. And now we need to have a case selection to switch between these different images. Clean this up a little bit. So I'm going to create a jitter color node. And I'm going to feed in the pattern index into the input. So if we look at this, we have just our straight RGB map that we had before. And I want to actually randomize this a little bit. So I'm gonna, what am I gonna do? Oh, first, let me clean this up a little bit. Actually, there's a really ugly line here. So I'm gonna create a radio transmitter and hook this up to the mask slot. Let's call this mask. And instead of having this line go all the way across, I'm gonna create a radio node and connect to my transmitter and hook this in here so we have a bit of cleaner lines. All right, back to our jitter color. So I want to use the pattern index in this case. So this would be my blue channel. So I'm gonna create an RGBA split. Use my pattern index and feed this in here. And let me use just the blue channel as a jitter signal on my jitter color. Let's close this down. Let's go to our jitter color and take on the use cell noise. Oh, actually, I should probably invert this. I'm gonna use the jitter, or oh sorry, the um, pattern index as an input and use the entire pattern index as my jitter signal. And now I can change the min and max gain and kind of have a randomized value and I can also use the seed to randomize this further. So now we have kind of a random value for each cell. I'm gonna feed this into the case selection of my input switch. I can kind of collapse this down as well. Make this as tidy as possible. And inside of my input switch, if I view the result here now, you can already see I'm switching between the different images. So I'm gonna play with the step size inside of the input switch a little bit. Try and randomize this a little bit more. Something that is less uniform. Okay, I think this works. And let's try to randomize the color as well as a little bit. So I'm gonna create another merge node and um, create a color node. Let's use some sort of blue here. Plug this into the over of the merge. 
and lower the amount a little bit. And same here, I'm gonna use my mask just to stencil it out. And let's use again a jitter color node. Um, we could use the exact same values as here. So I might as well transmit this. So I'm going to use this one and this one and hide these connections. And again, plug this into the, so I actually don't need this one, to the jitter signal. And now let's modify some of these jitter values. Um, actually, I might want to use in this case another signal. What am I doing? No. I'm gonna create a radio node and hook this straight into the result of the jitter color where I'm already producing a nice jittered version and hook this into the jitter signal. And now we can hide this as well. All right. Take on use cell noise again. And here we are. We can randomize the color and value of this quite easily. You can also apply a new, a new C to it. And here we are. We have kind of our mosaic shape a little bit. I hope this gives you some ideas what the Pattern Engine can do and yeah, have fun experimenting. And that is it for now.